The course that you are about to hear is called Philosophy Serves Theology. My name is Benedict Ashley. I am an emeritus professor of Aquinas Institute of Theology in St. Louis, and at present I am teaching in the Center for Healthcare Ethics at St. Louis University. For a good many years, I have taught philosophy and theology. As a member of the Dominican Order, we are very proud of two of the greatest philosophers and theologians in the church, St. Thomas Aquinas and his teacher, Albert the Great. But my experience has been in teaching students in philosophy that they wonder why they have to go through this rather esoteric and some for some rather boring and difficult subject philosophy when what they're really interested in is theology, knowing about God and God's love for his people. Consequently, I have made this course precisely because I hope that it will lead you to see that philosophy is very important to your right understanding of theology. Many students of theology don't realize this until they have completed their theological course. And then they begin to say, why didn't I pay a little more attention to philosophy? If you understand why you're studying philosophy, you will be able to carry out what Vatican II advised, and that is that philosophy be closely related to theology. Now, as you know, theology is about God as he reveals himself. God is indeed mysterious, far beyond the capacity of the human mind to know him. And yet, because he is a God of wisdom and love who created us, he wants us to know him. And he has made himself known in his creation as well as in his word, in revelation. And we need to be open to that revelation of God in the created world, the world that we live in every day that we see and hear and taste and touch, if we are going to really understand his word. God knows that he has to reveal himself in the terms of human experience. Otherwise, we would not know what that word means. That is why he became human in Jesus Christ. But also, even Jesus himself had to speak our human language. And that human language is drawn from human experience, from things that we understand and deal with every day. And so we need to sharpen our reason if we are to hear God's word. St. Anselm defined theology as faith-seeking understanding, faith seeking understanding. To understand the Word of God, we need to bring it down, as it were, and enflesh it, incarnate it in our experience. And that is why the study of secular learning is necessary to the understanding of sacred learning. Pope John Paul II has emphasized this very recently. He has written an encyclical called Fides et Ratio, Faith and Reason, 
to explain why it is that faith needs reason for understanding and also for communication. The faith has been given to us as a gift that we must communicate to others. It's a truth they need for their lives. Yet we cannot communicate to our times unless we know how to express that faith in words and symbols and arguments that fit our culture. So some people define theology, the role of theology, by saying that its task is to interpret the Word of God to our culture. Now that's not all theology does. Theology not only interprets the Word of God to our culture, it also defends it and promotes it and argues for it and communicates it to our culture because the, two th the Word of God is sometimes countercultural, and it doesn't quite fit the categories of the, what we hear on, what we see on television and hear on radio. It also is intended to help us in our prayer, in our learning to come closer to Jesus himself. And so reason plays a role in our understanding of the faith in many ways. And John Paul II emphasizes that fact. He points out that in recent years, there has been a tendency to play down reason, to say that after all, everything we say and everything we hear is just propaganda. It all is, has a hidden agenda that covers up certain interest groups that are trying to sell their, their product. And consequently, truth is not possible for the human mind. That's an old idea. In the days of the Greek philosophers, there were the sophists who taught that there is no truth except what is accepted by the crowd. What people accept is the truth. And what they accept is largely the result of people who know how to, to manipulate them and to persuade them to form public opinion. That's an old idea, and perhaps it applies more to our age than ever when we have such a huge communication industry and we have such clever people using that, the media to sell. But truth is possible to the human mind because God made us for truth. And to say that we cannot arrive at truth is an insult to the God of truth who wants us to know the world truly, to know ourselves, and to come to him.